In this screencast, I'll show you how to animate the survivor in your zombie survival game. Uh, before we start, you need to have a little bit of coding done first. So you need to have your world started, and you need to have a class called Survivor, and you need to set the image to one of the animation images. Also, you probably need to find the images that you want to use for your animation, and download them and put them in the Images folder of your Greenfoot project. So I already have that done. You can see that I have three pictures I'm going to use for the animation. It's really important that you know what their file names are. So I have Survivor 1, Survivor 2, and Survivor 3. They are all ping files. It's very important that you know the file extension of the graphics you're using. So then, to start our animation, we're going to do that in the Survivor class. And up in the top, we're going to add some fields. So the first thing we're going to do is create an image. So we say green foot image. And then we give it a name. So I'm going to name this Survivor 1. And that equals a new green foot image. And then in parentheses and quotes, you type the file name you want to use for that image. So I'm going to write Survivor 1 here. .png. Close the quotes. Close the parentheses and add a semicolon. It's really important that you know that this is the file name and this is just the name of the image. They don't have to match. I just prefer to do that to keep it easy. We have to do this for each image we're going to use, so I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste this three times. I'm going to press Control shift i to fix my indentation, and then I'm going to rename this Survivor 2 and Survivor 3, and this is going to be Survivor2.ping and Survivor3.ping. Each image has to have its own name, and I don't want to use the same image twice, so I make sure that they match. Also for our animation, we need to create an integer. So I'll do a public integer called frame, and that should equal 1 to start. Now we're ready to create a method to control our animation. So I'll come down here into my class, give myself a little bit of room, and then I'm going to write public void animate. That's going to be my animation method. Make sure you use some curly braces here. And how we're going to do this is we're going to use this integer or this number, frame, to figure out which picture we should show on the screen. To do this, we can use if statements. So we're going to say if frame equals equals 1. Remember that if you're using an if statement, you need two equal signs to check. We're going to use some curly braces here because we're going to do more than one thing. And we're going to say set the image or change the image to survivor 1. When we set an image, we use the name of the image that we created up here. So Survivor 1, Survivor 1. After we set the image, we're going to set the frame to 2. Now, the next step of this is we're going to add the rest of our frames. And we have to use else ifs when we do that. If we don't, our animation is not going to work. So we're going to say else if. And then the next one, we're going to check for frame 2. Then. We're going to just do what we did in the last frame. We're going to set the image, but this time we're going to set it to Survivor 2. And then we're going to set the frame to 3. So it's going to be kind of sequential. Frame 1, set the image, then go to frame 2. If we're in frame 2, set the image to 2, and then change the frame to 3. So the last step is to do one last else if. So I'm going to copy and paste that in there. and. For that else if, we want the frame to be 3. You only need as many frames as you have pictures. I'm going to set the image to Survivor 3. But now I want my soldier to look like he's always animating, or I want to loop the animation. So for frame, that's going to equal 1. So that after we set this image, it's going to go back to the beginning, and it's going to animate again. I can check to see if I made any errors by pressing Compile. We have no errors. Let's test this out by putting animate in our act method. So if I do this, he should animate all the time. I press compile, come out to my world, and compile. And when I press run, he should start animating. Now, he's animating really, really fast, and that's because Greenfoot runs that act method a lot of times per second, so I need to slow it down. I also don't want to animate my soldier when he's standing still. So let's go into the code and change that. The first thing we can do is we can just animate when I move. So I'm going to take my animate method out of the act, and I'm going to replace it with move. Before I did the screencast, I wrote a method for moving. So if I press up on my keyboard, my 
uh, soldier or my survivor walks around. What I want to do is I only want him to animate when he's moving. So I'm going to call the animate method in here. So now whenever I press up on my keyboard, he's going to move and animate. So if I compile that now, only when I'm pressing up on my keyboard is he animating. He's still moving too fast. So we can go back into the survivor class and we can fix that. So to slow down his animation, we're going to actually have to create one more integer. So we'll go public integer animation uh, counter. And that can be set to zero. And what we're going to use is modulus math to um, slow down our animation. So what we'll do is the first thing is in our act method, we're going to make our animation counter um, count up. We can do this by saying animation counter equals animation counter plus one. There's other ways to type that in there, but we'll do that one. So now the whole time the game is running, our animation counter is going to count up. And what we want to do here is we want to slow down our animation. So right before we call the animate method, we're going to add an if statement. We're going to say if animation counter, and then this is where the modulus math comes in. We're going to use a percent sign and we'll go 6 equals equals 0 and we'll close up that if statement. So what this says is if the animation counter is divided by 6 and has no remainder. So it checks the remainder, not the actual quotient. So if the remainder is 0 and we divide the animation counter by 6, it's going to animate. A really simple way of thinking about this is, is the animation counter a multiple of 6? So on 0 it's going to animate. When it counts up to 1, not a multiple of 6, 2, 3, 4, 5, all of those numbers it's not going to animate on. But when it hits 6, it'll animate. Or when it hits 12, it's going to animate. Or 18. So this is a really good way to slow down our animation. So we'll compile it and see what happens. Press compile here, press run. And now when I press up, my animation is much smoother and slower. So that's how you can add animation to your zombie survival game. This method work is a really good way of creating animation so you could use this for multiple parts of the game, for your explosions, for your zombies, for anything else that's animated.